Clearwater Marsh, Nevada. 14 degrees this morning. We got Alex down here to kill his first swan. A good buddy and Team Maniac member Dave Stanley driving the Go Devil. It's cold. There's a lot of new birds in the area. Just got down here from the Great Salt Lake in Utah. It's gonna be sweet, man. We're fired up. Man. Oh man, I'm pumped. I cannot wait. This is so awesome out here. Beautiful, beautiful morning. Blue clear skies and uh, a lot of new birds in the area. It's cold. And that's what we needed. All we can hope for now is a little bit of a wind. Maybe 50 miles an hour. That's all we're hoping for. But, uh, we don't get it. We still got the birds around. It's going to be a great day. Welcome to the Foul Life. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Welcome to Nevada. We're back at it. Canvasback.club, gun club. With our good buddy uh, Dave Stanley and Dennis Isbister. There's some mule deer out in the cleaner wheat field. And uh, got Alex down here. Come down with James and Cody and we're going after some Nevada tundra swans. They just started getting here. Usually they start piling into the marsh out here in Stillwater around Thanksgiving. Right now it's December 2nd and uh, they're really just starting to show up. We've gotten five, 600 fresh birds in the last 48 hours. And uh, we're gonna go out and set up about 1820 um, swan. Decoys, big white color. Probably a few diver decoys, some golden eye and uh, canvas back to even do a better job of attracting those swans with some color. And then we'll put some mallard blocks in there. And uh, yesterday they started moving at about nine in the morning. When it's froze like this, they really don't make a move. They try to stay in one place all night and all morning, keep their body heat, don't burn any calories or burn any energy. And then they get up and they fly straight to where they want to feed to. And they, they usually get pretty pretty easy to decoy this time of year because they want to get in there and eat. And if you can find an open pocket or create an open pocket of water within all this ice, you should do pretty good. <laughs> We're going to have to make two trips, Dave. We're pretty lucky down here in Nevada. We're one of the only few states in the nation where you could actually harvest tundra swans. And my buddy Dave Stanley, he's been hunting the Canvasback Duck Club in the Stillwater Marsh for, you know, close to 30 years now. And he's got this swan hunting dialed in, whether we're using canvasback blocks or big swan decoys, or, you know, mix them in with some puddle ducks. He knows how to locate them, he knows how to get on them, and he knows how to kill them. And when Alex was learning, you know, what me and Clay were doing down here day, year after year, you know, getting to harvest these big birds, he got infatuated with it and every season he's like, man, when can I come get a swan? I'm like, come around Thanksgiving, then he'd have something else going on. But finally, Alex got to get down in Nevada. We hooked up with Dave out at the canvas back again and man, it started off with a you know a real good dinner out there. Dave's hospitality is unreal as usual. And then it was time to get in the go devil, break the ice and try to harvest one of these big birds. So when the opportunity came up for me to hunt swans in Nevada, I had to jump at the chance. Chad invited me to come down and hunt with his good friend Dave Stanley at the Canvasback Gun Club. Now this gun club is located at the Stillwater National Wildlife Refuge and it's a neat place. It is full of tradition and history. It reminded me of an old western town. It had dusty roads, it had directional signs, it even had a pet cemetery located right outside the town. Today we're going to be shooting these swans. 
with heavy shot goose, 12 gauge, 3 inch, ounce and 3 eighths, 1,350 feet per second, 6 shot. A lot of pellets going after them, and this stuff hits like a ton of bricks. We'll show you what number 6 is. Ounce and 3 eighths heavy shot goose can do to these swans. Check this out. I'm calling in, Alex. It was kind of like Grant Kuiper's call that he got in Elifrica. <laughs> So this is just the beginning of the migration right here? Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, you know, they're not the numbers here yet that are normally here this time of year. So Can you see those line of swans up there, that white line? Uh -huh. Those are all swans following each other south. That's a big lead swan. That's a huge lead swan. Are there people actually in that swan? They carry yeah. people. <laughs> swan carriers. They do, they're called swan carriers. What are you laughing at? I'm serious, why are you laughing? Because you, you're Why are you laughing what me and Dave are trying to teach you? <laughs> oh, I, don't I mean, include me in that. <laughs> Dave, I don't understand what he's laughing at. Me either, man. Look at all the this swans. Is serious stuff. I don't get it. I don't understand you at all. Why does the swan say TWA on the side? Yeah, right. <laughs> because he's banded. Oh. USA. Okay? It's called a collar. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Foul Life is brought to you by Sportsman's Warehouse, Toyota Trucks, Legacy Sports, and Zinc Calls. So that morning, it was pretty slow. We had a lot of fun in the blind, a lot of laughs, but the birds that were in the area, they just really didn't fly. So Chad and Clay, they had to take off and go to a funeral. Dennis, he had to go pick up his daughter from school. So that basically left me and Dave to try and get me my first one. Chad and Clay had to go to a funeral. I'm about to go to a swan's funeral. So after sitting out there all day, freezing our butts off, we finally get a swan to work us. Alex and I have been planning this swan hunt for three or four years and you know different things came up and didn't work out so we finally got it together this year and uh, uh, you know we've had a good time. We had three good days out in the marsh. There are not as many swans as there are normally this time of year but you know we got some on film and happened to harvest a few and uh, laughed a whole bunch. That is awesome Dave. Look how big that bird is. It's a young bird, yep. right? Young bird. Yep. Good eating bird. We're going to eat him. 
and they, they decoy like crazy. Oh, that was great, you. Colin. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure, man. Oh. Your hand's shaking there, Alex. <laughs> you know how bad I wanted to harvest one of these? Yeah. yeah. I remember we've been talking about this oh, for three or four years. Yeah, man. for years I wanted to come down and hunt with you. Oh, man. So. This was the first time we got to hunt, uh, that Alex and I got to hunt together, and uh, he's uh, you know he's obviously done this for a living, knows what he's doing. Um, he brings his experience, but he's totally willing to listen to you know somebody that has some local knowledge or whatever. And, and it it was really easy to do this the last three days. I mean, uh, the whole crew, the cameramen, everybody were were great to work with, and and uh, you know we got it done. Finally, my first swan. Yeah, I was a young one, but who cares? It's all about the experience. And I got to do something that not a lot of waterfowl hunters get to do, and that's harvest a swan. A lot of credit goes out to Dave Stanley. He hung tough with me all day. It was cold, there weren't a lot of birds in the area, yet we still managed to get one. Dave is definitely an excellent waterfowl hunter. In fact, he's probably one of the best waterfowl hunters I've ever been privileged to hunt with. Dave, thank you so much, man. You're a stud. And now, brothers and sisters, The Goose Gospel with Chad Beldy. Guys, it's week four. Here we are. Short read, Goose Call Instruction, brought to you by Zinc Calls. This week, we're going to change it up a little bit. So far, week one was hand positioning, pressurized air, and the consistent flow of air over the tongue and into the call. Week two was the cluck. Week three was the moan. We're not going to go into a new sound this week, but uh, instead, we're going to talk about mixing those clucks and moans together. Talk about slow calling as opposed to always calling fast. Slow calling, making your fast calling sound even faster and getting that goose rhythm. Get away from the humanistic rhythm. Go out, listen to geese, hear what they're doing. T go out and watch fields filling up with geese. What are the geese on the ground doing as opposed to the geese in the air? They're fighting back and forth. They're territorial animals. So learn that. And remember, we're not being inviting to the birds in the air. We're telling them to get the heck out of here. This is our food. We found it first. And those birds in the air think they're trash talking. So they're going to start trash talking back until they put their feet down and land in your decoys. So what we're going to do today, just talk a little bit about goose rhythm and mixing those clucks and moans together. So let's just put our hands back on the call how we had them. Get your lips wrapped around it the right way, like you're drinking out of a Coke bottle. Get the consistent flow of air through it. And let's get some clucks going. Start mixing in some moans. And uh, that's pretty much it for this week, guys. This was your short read calling tip brought to you by Zinc Calls. We'll see you next week here at The Foul Life. The Foul Life is brought to you by Dakota Decoy, Heavy Shot, Otis Technology, and High Viz. We're hard at it after these swans, guys. And, uh, you know, good buddy Dave Stanley's got me and Alex out in the marsh. And what happens is my brothers Clinton Clay decide to grab the other camera and get after some coyotes. There's a ton of coyotes around the Stillwater Marsh. They grab my nephew Chance and what ends up happening was pretty special. They actually call in a desert badger. And If any of you have ever had the luck to do this, you know what I'm talking about. These things are aggressive. They can be mean. Their claws, you know, they're up to an inch long. And, and I've seen them just tear animals apart. So to see the way this badger reacted to the call and the face time that he gave us, it was pretty special. We're back with more dead dog walking. Check this out.
I'm Clint Belding. I'm Chad and Clay's brother. I'm a physical therapist in Reno, Nevada. I have a huge passion for predator hunting. I couldn't wait to get my sons Chance and Caden out on their first hunt. There's a badger coming right here. Clint, uh, just a badger. Turn to your left, hard left. This is an unbelievable hunt. I'm sitting there in the, in the blind looking out over the horizon looking for coyotes, and this badger was so sneaky, I didn't even see her come through, and I, I had to wait for Clay to give me a lip smack because they're sitting up a little bit higher than I am, and I can't really see down in the brush where this badger is, and all of a sudden I turn off to my left, and here she is staring, and she's right on top of us. This hunt's pretty neat, guys. When I first saw this footage, I really did not think this badger was going to finish the way it did. Every time they lip smack, no movement at all. He just stands there and he's just staring them down, trying to pick them apart. As soon as they put that jackknife call to their mouth, here he comes, a little bit closer, a little bit closer. Punch it. Punch it. Punch it. The Foul Life is brought to you by Hornady Ammunition, Buff Headwear. Under Armour and Brigham Wright. Ends up going left to right and then just centering up perfect and Clint was able to center punch him and I mean, pretty special, pretty special hunt. After that fourth series, the badger came in here, he was 10 feet out in front of me, but he was, too, he was too low below the camera. Ch Ch well, no, Chance, Chance, I was looking out, Chance says, no, there's something moving right here and yeah. I'm looking for a coyote. Yeah. And I didn't see nothing, you know, they're only a foot from the ground, so I, Chance I'll said, there's something moving. I'll show you where, he, where his footprints are, but he came right around the corner of this bush. Nice spot, dude. Good spot. You're getting five, dude. Go down by daddy. Good <laughs> spot, man. That was awesome, dude. Here, sit down with me. Sit down right here. Look up the clay. So I walk out and pick this badger up off the ground. I turn around, and my brother's talking smack, saying my, my son spotted this badger five minutes before I even knew it was there. Yeah. Chance spotted that badger for us. Chance, look at me, bud. He almost did a full 360 around us. I know. You <laughs> went biased, and I, I, I only saw him up here to the left, finally. You didn't hear me. I wasn't lip smacking, but I was going. I, I, I you didn't hear that? I was trying to do a little mouse I sound. My headphones in the and truck. I mean, he, he was just right out in front here for a long time. <laughs> and he went off He went off this way, and then maybe two, three minutes later, you, that's when you oh, saw him. Yeah, that's awesome. He was hanging around for a long time. They're awesome predators. He was. <laughs> I thought it was a coyote <laughs> coming around there. <laughs> I'm guys trying to tell me to quit moving, but I'm trying to tell him there's something moving right there. Where was he? Did you see where the badger was when you first saw him? Yeah. Wasn't he back over here behind you when you yeah. first saw him? Yeah. Where was he? You saw him when he was way down here? Yeah. You did? He pointed like this. Yeah. He said, stop moving. He goes, there's something moving down here. Oh. You hear it all the time in this industry, guys. Take a kid hunting. Try to get a kid involved in the sport. and. When you have somebody like Chance and my other nephew, Caden, that Clint's bringing up the right way, what my dad was able to instill in these kids, it's really cool to be able to see them have this much success in the field and to be able to go out in the Nevada desert, call in multiple coyotes, call in a desert badges, see the smiles on their face, have Clint teach them about gun safety. That's what it's all about, in my opinion. I hope that you guys are trying to 
trying to do the same thing with your kids and with your nephews or with your grandkids. I mean, it's what this sport's all about. And if we don't do it, the sport's going to come to an end. So try to get a kid out there. We don't just talk the talk. We try to walk the walk a little bit. And Chance is going to be in this industry for a long time. And so is Caden. And uh, they're really good hunters. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what Chance and Clinton Clay were able to pull off. Next week on The Foul Life.